And we are live. Brett, what is up, brother? How are you? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, Mike. How are you, my brother? I'm doing well. I'm doing well, man. Um, thanks so much for uh, for for taking this uh, opportunity to um, to learn more about your business. Uh, I'm excited to share about um, about what we're doing, um, and I ho in hopes that it will help you improve your systems and processes. Um, as I said in, in the email, there is nothing off limits. Uh, we are going to really dig into um, expireds for sub owners, and then we're going to sprinkle in a little recruiting there at the end, like I promised you on the phone. And um, so what I want to do um, is really I just want to learn a little bit more about your business um, as it relates to, um, you know, how you got started into the industry. I know you mentioned that it's been kind of a, a an interesting ride for you. So why don't I open up the floor to you right now to kind of share your story and bring us up to today? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. Well, um, I've been in the business now for 17 years, and uh, I started my career you know, and made my way through uh, Century 21, uh, probably about uh, eight nine years ago now. Um, transitioned in there to uh, you know the Coldwell Banker. Uh, spent another you know few years there. Had a small transition in between to a couple other, I guess you could call it more mom and pop businesses out there. They were just smaller, really not a brand recognition, if you will. Uh, and then I basically for the past five plus years been over at Remax, um, in which uh, we all know Remax. They've been around. They're obviously considered to be one of the top in the world. And I really thought that I would finish my career at Remax. Um, and uh, never could see a change coming on that. Um, and eventually, um, you know, there was always different roadblocks along the way. But uh, as the career was starting to really take off, um, I just found that uh, it, it was sometimes challenging, you know, even in the end there to really build a, a team based on some of the concepts and things that we were doing you know, at Remax. Not that there's not a lot of great teams, but just kind of felt like there was some things kind of missing, you know, that would allow me to take it to another level. Right. Right. And so, um, you know, that's a, that is you're right. That's an interesting ride. I think that um, the, the model, the, the evolution of a real estate career, uh, it seems to me, is for for especially for high producers uh, is 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 it seems like it's it's very similar uh, in, in most cases. But when you talk about, you know, starting off uh, at maybe a more traditional brokerage where, you know, the split is a little bit lower. Right. And you felt like you, you maybe you're you're getting something from the brand loyalty, and you are to a certain extent, I think. Um, I wouldn't disagree with that. But then as you start to sell more real estate, you start to realize that the traditional brokerages, um, from a value perspective, they just can't provide uh, the type of tools and resources you need to grow a large team or even a business that sells you know, um, 75 uh, plus properties per year. Uh, I think probably about the cutoff point to where you start um, looking at the law of diminishing returns. But, you know, you reached out to me. Uh, and again, I appreciate you doing that. This is the perfect time uh, for anybody watching or listening to really start um, holding everything that you're doing accountable to a return, to a specific return um, as you cross into 2019. Uh, and, and, and so you want you reached out to me and you said, hey, I want to learn more about uh, for sub I owners. I want to learn more about expireds. Uh, and, and recruiting, right? And, and those are those are three great pillars of a successful business. And so, right now in your business, um, why don't you tell me? First of all, what is your goal for for uh, for income uh, in 2019? Yeah, excellent question. You know, last year I, I finished up. Uh, actually, it was my first uh, really you know netting over you know, hundred thousand and. and and commissions. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's taken a while to go there. I'd always start off strong and then something would drag me down or I'd spend too much time, you know, overcoming a you know, different set of circumstances and I keep spinning my wheels on those things, kind of repeating the same bad habits, if you will. Yeah. Um, and then finally just broke through it. And you know, now that I've done that, I'm hungry. I'm ready to take it to another level. And I want to be able to uh, bring on other, you know, team members and you know, be able to mentor them through the process. And uh, you really just uh, take this thing to another level. So my goals going into 2019 would be to double that. Um, and I think it's a very realistic goal. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I, I, you, 
you heard me, I was a little reluctant to ask that question um, because I have a tendency to ask, how many transactions do you want to do? And, you know, I, I caution anybody who is, is gauging their business on the number of transactions unless they know um, um, from, a, from a dollar perspective what those transactions might yield because at the end of the day, it's all about profitability. And so, you know, that's what we're going to talk to or speak to today, um, you know, specifically as it relates to for sale by owners and expireds and recruiting. Um, tell me this. Uh, let's go through each one of these um, and kind of tell me what you're doing in your business today. Um, so let's start off with expireds. I know expireds really, really well. My business, for the most part, uh, when I transitioned full time in 2014, um, was predicated predominantly on expired listings. Um, I sold 57 houses my first year in 2014. And no kidding, man, about 77% of that business was expired related. And wow. um, I didn't have a big network in the city that I live in. My wife is, 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 was raised in this area. And so I, really all I could do to scale my business was just hit the phones. And so tell me where you're at in your day uh, or today in your business as it relates to what you're doing with expireds. Yeah, for expireds, obviously the biggest thing is combing through the MLS, you know, making sure that we're checking our weekly or you know, monthly you know, reports, uh, checking those properties that have now showed up on the expired hot list. And of course, making sure they didn't relist, uh, you know, because sometimes uh, in our area, particularly where the MLS numbers have switched a key recognizable digit, um, sometimes we want to give the sellers more of a fresh start. So in that case, we might tear up the existing listing agreement and turn around and fire out a new one. Technically, at a lower price is the ultimate goal. Uh, just to, you know, so it doesn't necessarily look it's like it's getting stale and been on the market for a long time. So. For starters, that's making sure that we're not soliciting on the property that has now been relisted with either that same realtor or already another realtor that they've identified. Sure. Uh, from there, once we made sure that everything is good and it looks like it's you know wide open or a fair game, if you will, you know, then my whole target has been trying to slide under the radar with a letter. I'm sure I'm probably one of 20, 30, or uh, 40 other agents out there. So it's like, what do you do that's different? Well, the thing is, most of us have access to the same tools. It's just how we're using those tools that you know are going to generate the results that we're looking for. And a lot of it is consistency and staying in front of them and not giving up after just sending out the first letter. So yeah. really, my whole focus has been mostly doing the letters. Um, I haven't really attempted to try to find their phone numbers. Um, you know, I know it's a little bit different since everybody has a cell phone out there. Although I understand there's some great tools that uh, might want to explore, like Spokio, for an example, mm -hmm. um, might be a great avenue. And uh, so that's another level I really like to explore as far as maybe another way besides just sending out mailers to go after the expired market. Got it. Got it. And um, by the way, um, Brett's in Wisconsin, um, for those of you who don't know Brett. And um, well, Yep. And, 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 and so for you, the, the letters that you're sending, how many expireds are, are in your marketplace now? Daily? Well, um, as like a lot of marketplaces, um, we were not seeing very many expireds going through the month of uh, June, July and August. So it was very slim, especially with it being such a huge seller's market. Um, but I've been studying it for a while. It's one of the things I, you know, as realtors should monitor what the market is doing. And I would say probably in the last uh, two months alone, you know, if I were just to break it down to like the city of Appleton or the city of Green Bay, because our areas are so small, we usually combine to both markets. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say probably in the last uh, month or so, we've probably seen 40 to maybe 50 expired. Whoa. So I would say probably uh, a 60 percent increase from where we were in June and July and all through it. Dude, that is so interesting because I was just having a conversation this morning with one of my teammates. And um, so we were talking about our local MLS uh, and specifically Dayton. So we service both Dayton and Cincinnati marketplaces. And just in Dayton alone, uh, we went from uh, in September, we went, we went, or excuse me, in August, we went from just over 1,600 transactions that month to just over 1,200 in the month of September. So August over 1,600. September just over 1,200, and I looked yesterday, 
and we are at 604 transactions for the month of October. And we hadn't been that low for the month of October since 2013. And what, what's interesting in what you said is you said about the, about the last month or two, it's exactly the same here. So, you know, this call may be more impactful than you may even know because what I'm seeing for you right now, you said 60 expires. Holy cow, Brett, that's opportunity, man. And yes. the, yeah. the greatest thing about expires is that, you know, oftentimes listings expire because an agent is too afraid to have a price reduction conversation. They got the listing and then they don't, they never call the aid or they never call the seller and ask for the price reduction. And it's just baffling to me. And what I found was that I would list so many expired homes and I would go in and I would say, you know, here's where you were priced at. Here's where you probably should be priced at. We would take the listing and it would sell in like, you know, a month or two and we'd look like the hero. And the only thing we did differently was have a conversation about price. And we sold so many homes that way. And uh, so, you know, that's just one small tip uh, mm -hmm. that, that, you know, if you do have listings, if you're hurting for money right now and you're prospecting for new listings, prospect prospect your current listing inventory for price reductions and that'll be your quickest way to a paycheck, okay? <laughs> yeah. And, and and so but you know, I'll digress. I mean, the the whole the great thing, the great piece about the expire business right now with having more and more opportunity is that, you know, people are going to start to dial it back right now as we roll into October and November and December, because, you know, October, you got Halloween, right? And then November, you got Thanksgiving and then Christmas and then New Year. And then, right, you've got all these reasons that agents um, are telling themselves that they should, that the market, that there's no property moving right now. When, when in reality was, if you go back and look at the MLS, you can see that there are several hundred and probably several thousand, even in some major metropolitan markets, uh, of properties that sell. So, um, okay, so brother, this is awesome. It's a good conversation. So 60 expired, um, th there's opportunity all over that. So in place right now for you, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have a mailer. And so tell me what that mailing campaign looks like. Well, um, I give credit to one of the coaches I've worked with before, first of all, because uh, you know one of the things that, uh, in his template that I've kind of duplicated yep. uh, rather than reinventing the wheel is I usually like to include a property, um, you know, a luxury property of some sort, whether it's a million dollar listing or a three quarter million dollar listing around in our area, that's big volume home, if you will, that's a high price home. Yep. And I can find quite a few of those that haven't sold, um, you know, whether they've been on the market for six months or they've been on the market for two years. And so I can kind of use that and as I'm sending it out to the seller saying, hey, look, uh, sometimes even the best homes on the market just don't sell. And uh, taking a look at some of those things, um, you know, you hit price. Obviously, we know that price is a big, big thing. But sometimes as I'm looking at these three quarter million dollar listings or even these million dollar listings, sometimes and I cringe when I see it, it's the pictures a lot of times are horrible. You know, they've used their cell phone, their iPhones. And don't get me wrong. I mean, cell phones have come a long way. Uh, they're great for selfies, but they're not meant for real estate, you know, and when you're getting blurred pictures or you can't hardly make up the, you know, the, the kitchen cabinets and things like that. Well, it's no wonder they're not getting any of the showing activity. And frankly, you know, I sometimes wonder if these poor sellers have actually seen what their houses look like on the Internet. Yeah. Um, and so to me, that's you know, a great opportunity to showcase that, hey, you know, it may not be your house. Uh, and it just might be like you said, you know, the pricing is off, uh, you know, the pictures might be off or there's a combination of different things that we can look at together to uh, find that missing link. So yeah. my letters start off with something like the luxury property that did not sell and then I'll let them know that, hey, you know, there's a great opportunity sitting here. We just need to get together and find out what it is. And here's what we do. These are the tools that I use and this is how I will turn them into your advantage. And that's the letter I kind of put together and I have the contact information obviously to follow up on there and then you know, try to stick with them every uh, couple weeks or so and send them on another follow up letter just to see where we're at with things. Yeah. And, you know, you may want to uh, what is your response rate on that? Right now, uh, I would probably say, you know, maybe a, I might get two to three responses out of a, out of a month. So it's not as high impact as I would like it to see. OK. 
You know what you may want to do just to tweak that mail piece a little bit is, is insert some sort of a call to action if you don't already have one. Mm -hmm. uh, like um, maybe if you have some sort of a home eval website, you know, go here to see what your home is worth in today's market, right? Um, it, or or some sort of a tracking phone number um, through, a, I use it, we use a company called Dialogue Tech. So we're, we're tracking all of our different marketing pieces. So if we send out postcards, we've got a number. If we send out, if we have on our, our on our real estate signs, we have a number in Dayton, uh, and then in Cincinnati, we have a different number. Um, so you know, you may want to if you insert that call to action, like um, I don't know, we used to use a really good one. Uh, we'll, we'll sell your home in seventy-seven days, or we'll sell it for free. Right. And, um, the, the whole premise behind that program was, and, and it's really irrelevant right now because properties are selling so quickly. Yeah, I agree. As, as the market starts to soften a little bit and, and average days on market go up, uh, we will roll that program back out uh, because um, it, gives, it, it, it gives the seller a reason to call you, right? When the market becomes a little more challenging, hey, I want to know that if you can sell my home that you've got some skin in the game, right? And so we say, hey, we'll sell it in 77 days or we'll sell it for free, right? And, you know, obviously there are, there are some res pricing restrictions and um, and, and some uh, staging restrictions that that we have the seller go by, but it's, it's, it's not asking them to do anything more above and beyond what you wouldn't um, uh, candidly ask any other sellers to do, right? So try mm -hmm. to insert, try to think about a really good um, call to action to insert. Um, and it could be just a one liner, man. You know what I mean? Um, just, and, and I think you might, what you might see is that that will increase your response rate a little bit. But um, so the mailer absolutely continue to do. I love it. Uh, I, I, if I were you, um, because you know, you're right. I think that the market is saturated with agents trying to uh, go after these expired leads. And so, you know, you asked what what can you do differently to, to differentiate yourself? And um, and and one thing you can do to differentiate yourself is is to make sure you're using um, every channel to try and reach out to these expireds. And what I mean by that is, you know, call, text, email, social media, Right, you're already doing the mailing piece. It's sort of a it's it, it's um it's omnipresence. It's you're everywhere, right? Right. Uh, because people are just bombarded, Brett, these days by not just real estate marketers, right? But I mean, marketing everywhere they go. I mean, they're they're thumbing through their Facebook feed and they're seeing sponsored ads. We're seeing ads on TV. We're listening to ads on the radio, right? It's very it's it's very challenging to gain mind share in. Mm -hmm. In, in the consumer's eye when you're not constantly in front of them. And so when I when I say that you may want to look at adding those additional pieces in, mm -hmm. um, the great resolve is that when you do, those, those, those marketing avenues will actually pay for themselves. And um, so what I'll go through you uh, with you what we're doing right now. Um, so we're, we're obviously we're calling, right? I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't ask you to do something that we weren't already doing. Um, right. But for you, it you you know you're you're talking about right now your system is or your workflow is you know you comb through the MLS and obviously they report what listings expire each day, and then so you have this list right and so that's the way I started out calling expireds. I had a list um, through the MLS and then what I would do is I would go to like whitepages.com and then I would query uh, the address based um, or actually I would go to I go to the address, then I go to the tax records and see who owned the property, right? And then I'd use the name to look up the phone number. And in some cases, I would get that phone number. Um, in some cases, I wouldn't. But when when I got the phone number, I would then call that phone number. And there's the, the thing about this whole process is, Brett, and you know as well as I do, yep, is yep. that there's time involved in doing that, right? right and yeah, yeah. so, so we're, when we're thinking about dollar productivity, we're, we're thinking about, okay, what is the highest and best use of our time? Is it worth maybe spending a couple hundred bucks a month to have a system that does all of this for you and then delivers the data to you every day by 8 a.m. so you can call those expired, right? And so, but here's the thing, right? You have to earn the right to be able to do that. And the way that you do that, right, is you start listing a few properties from expired. You make a little money, 
you save some and then you invest some back in the business. And then you invest some back in the business by, you know, reaching out to a company like a Red X, uh, like a Land Voice Data, like a um, like a Vulcan Seven, which is the platform that we use. Mm -hmm. But and you know, it doesn't matter which one you use. And I know, um, you know, people will people will ask me, well, what are you using? Well, what are you using? And it's, and it's really it's not so much about that. It's that you're using something, right? Right. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we I started off, you know, after I did it the way you were doing it, if we moved to a system or I moved to a system at that point um, called Red X. Right. And so they they just delivered every morning. Um, they delivered the, the phone number, the property address and then whatever phone numbers they had associated with that property. And what was great is I would log right into the system and then I would peck dial uh, every one of those. Right. And then they added a dialer component. Right. So. The great thing about the dialer component is what I'm getting more time back. Right. So I can I can it's a dollar for time trade off. Right. And so like our our most precious resource is not money. Our most precious asset is not money. It's time. Right. Yeah. Because you can always make more money. You can never make more time. So so what I'm looking at is, OK, if I'm going to invest this money, I'm going to what I want to get back for that is time. And, and, and if I can get back time and know that it will accomplish the same goal as what I was doing before, then I, that's a win for me. So then I moved to that system, as I told you before, called uh, Red X, added the dialing component. Right. And so now I'm getting really dialed in. I'm optimizing. I'm getting really efficient in my business. Right. And so, you know, the first the I would start every morning, I would always start at 745. Now, um, this is a dis full disclosure. You cannot use a dialer before before eight o'clock in the morning. There's some FTC guidelines or something like that. Uh, but you can peck dial at 745. And I'll tell you, man, if, if I was going to if, if I was going to give away my expired secret, that would be it. That's the one nugget that if you walk away from this entire interview with, Call it 745, man, because people are people are have this crazy myth or story that they've made up in their head that if they call before eight o'clock that, you know, people are just going to reach through the phone and choke them. And uh, that's just not reality. I've had some of the best conversations at 745, usually because think about it. If you call somebody at eight, many people are required to get to work by eight. So right. you're getting them as soon as they go in the door to work. They're probably not going to have time to talk to you. Right. And so yeah, if you yeah. call them at 745, chances are they might still be on their commute, right? Yeah, absolutely. And so um, take that into consideration. If you're going to write anything down, that would be the one I would write down. Uh, but what, what I would what I would say to you, though, is that, you know, that data when I woke up and got to the phones at 745 every morning was already there. It was a beautiful thing, Brett. <laughs> and I just opened up my my uh, platform and there it was. Right. And then when I added the dialer component, it was like. Boom. And nice. you know, so and, and, yeah. and I, you know, I could check everybody that I wanted to call, cue the dialer and then just tear through them. Right. And so I would the first thing I would do every morning was call the new expireds and, um, and and built a great business doing that. And, and then obviously what you want to do as you move forward and you start to make more money, uh, like I told you at the beginning of the call, is you want to make sure that you're holding all your expenses accountable. And so we're always looking not for the next best thing, but we're looking for different components to help optimize our business to make it better, right? I run a team, we have over 20 agents here. I want to make sure that we're giving them not only uh not only leads, but we're giving them the best quality leads, the best quality data, and the best quality tools and resources in order to perform, right? So we moved on at that point to a system called Vulcan 7, which I'm sure you've heard of, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so now the way my business is set up is um, our agents, we have a marketing manager. His name is Dennis. Um, he sends out a CSV file of all the for sale by owners and expireds every morning at 7.30 and all the agents get it, right? And... Um, and, and then we have an ISA team that gets here at eight o'clock in the morning. And the first thing that they're charged with doing is calling the new expireds list. And so for you right now, you are your ISA, right? Correct. Yeah. And so 
and again, that ISA piece was what? It was just more about optimizing and buying time back, right? So that I freed me up to then work on the business so that I could help it can continue to grow. Because it wasn't, for me, it became where that where I was in my business and it wasn't the most, while it was dollar productive for me to be on the phones, it wasn't the most dollar productive thing that I could be doing, right? Now it's become to work with my agents in order to help them grow their businesses. So, and then help people like you, man, which I, I so enjoy doing. So, um, you know, with the expires, uh, the workflow is then, and then, you know, obviously you're using, uh, you're utilizing some sort of CRM. Um, I know you're an EXP agent, so you either have access to Commissions Inc. or KV Core, right? Right, right. Uh, you can get some sort of uh, um, uh, integration between the two platforms. So like KV Core and Vulcan 7 to where you're either, um, you're either automating that process or you're you're downloading a CSV file uh, from one of those platforms or um, many of the platforms these days, and I know Vulcan 7 in particular, um, you're able to use that as a CRM and so you can keep them separate in and of themselves, right? So in, in that CRM piece is very, very um, critical in any business uh, because oftentimes, and you know this because, um, you've obviously have six, you've had success in, in real estate is that we don't make contact on the first call, do we? No, it's the fifth, sixth, seventh, sometimes the 10th call. Yeah, and statistics show that conversions, uh, lead conversions don't usually happen uh, until between dials nine and 13. And so we're realizing that, uh, and we're telling that and communicating that to our team that when people give up on dials two or, or five or even seven, um, that you you know you're stopping just short of the gold, and and so for you the, the reason why I tell you that is because um, that that's where that CRM component comes into play, right? Because what what'll happen is, and now that you're getting more and more expireds, what'll happen is that you um, you're getting so many expireds and you're making so many phone calls that you unless you have some sort of a CRM in place. You 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 don't know what the left hand and the what 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 the right hand's doing, right? And, and the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. And so, Whoa. what that CRM component allows you to do is go in and, and not not only input notes but schedule follow ups, right? And so that again, it's about optimization. So that when if you talk if you call you know Joe Smith and you don't get a hold of Joe Smith, then you want to set a a uh, a reminder to call Joe Smith back at lunch. And then if you don't get him at lunch, you want to get a reminder to call him back at, at uh, right before dinner time. And then if you do have a conversation with Joe Smith and Joe Smith says, hey, you know what? Uh, we're just going to take it off the market for now, but we're my, my we're going to be relocating to Tennessee this time next year. And I do want to talk to a realtor. And you, you what, what do you want to do at that point? You want to go in and make a note of that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's another view. Yeah. And so... And, and that will allow you to then when you call Joe Smith back in, you know, early spring to, to list the property is to have an intelligent conversation. And Joe Smith knows that, hey, he listened to me. Right. Because what you're going to say is you're not going to say, hey, uh, Joe Smith, I'm calling. I'm a realtor. I'm calling to help you sell your house. It's Joe Smith. I'm calling you and, because I want to help out with the transition to Tennessee. Right. Because that's the ultimate goal. And that's the power of a CRM. It's, it's kind of set it and forget it. And Lord knows us realtors, uh, with everything that we have going on in our lives, that's just a great value add piece. So the CRM is a critical component. Um, are What CRM are you using right now? Yeah, before uh, coming on with EXP, um, and I still have it, I was using LionDesk. And you know, I absolutely loved it. Yep. Um, and of course, like you said, now with EXP. Is that Gabe Cordova? What's that? Is that, Ga that? is that Gabe Cordova? Is he the one that... That does line Dude, up. Uh, I think it's Dave Anderson that actually started that one. Okay, all right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's been a pretty good system. It's it's got things like um, video you know, video campaigns that can add kind of like a um, you know, like a bomb bomb, if you will. Yeah. Uh, so that's some of the cool things. But one thing I've discovered with KV Core, which is it's a monster of a system. You know, six thousand dollar yearly. You know tool system that we're getting for free, which is unbelievable, you know, and of course it's not designed to replace our job, but uh, what I'm liking about that one now is uh, that if, if uh, a seller that's come on my home value reports and things like that is chiming in, 
um, it actually will follow up with them and engage with them through text messaging and things like that automatically using the smart um, CRM system where it actually intelligently responds as if it's me and uh, really buys me that time to jump in and follow up with them via text or phone calls. And so that's been a really um, quite surprising to see how effective that's been. Yeah. Yeah. You can get really greasy, man, with some of these, um, you know, automated text messages, uh, emails. Um, you know, I mean, the, you, you've got essentially um, you can see what leads are looking at, how many times they've looked at properties. Uh, you can set the system up to alert you to those things so that if, a, if an individual looks at a property five times, you get an alert or an email to your phone saying this consumer just looked at this property five times. Um, I think that, you know, you're on the right track, um, but I would continue to look uh, towards optimization um, because when you're talking about 100 grand, right, you know that you can't do last year uh, what you what you you know that essentially you can't give the same effort as last year and expect the same result. Right. Yeah, uh, exactly. expect, a, expect a different result. So you've got you've got to do so, you've got to continue to add. Uh, add value into your business. And the best way to do that is optimizing your time. So um, when, when we talk about time optimization, we talk about those components where, you know, what what is going to, if I can spend X, what am I going to get back for that? If, and if I'm buying time back, um, that to me is a good dollar for dollar trade off because, you know, and then ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to start creating more and more business, right? And then you're going to get so busy that you can't do your own admin work. And then so you're going to go out and hire an admin and there'll be an expense associated with that, which is great. But what's what's great about that, again, is that admin then gives you more time to lead, generate and 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 grow the business. And so you're in that really cool stage right now in your business where, you know, you're you're you've just kind of crossed the precipice of uh, really helping your business go to the next level. And so this is a critical time for you. Um, and you want to make sure that you make the right investments. Um, I would say until you invest, I, I, I always like what I did from, you know, the time I started my business is I invested in technology uh, as a leverage component for myself until I could afford to actually invest in actual leverage through people. Right. So what I wanted to do, if I knew my business was predicated on expired listings, is really leverage every tool, all the best tools to make me even better at what I knew I was already good at. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure does. Absolutely. And so, and you know, same thing with expireds. A lot of this is cross pollination. Like we could talk a lot of this. The only difference between for sell by owners and expireds is that um, there's a longer gestational period. So while I love expireds, there are people having success at a high level with for sale by owners too. The great thing about expireds is um, we know they want to sell their house and we know they're willing to hire a realtor, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And so I think that's the best place to start. Um, the, the, the thing about for sale by owners uh, is that, um, is that oftentimes when they're just putting their home in the market, they still have that ego, right? Like, oh, I can sell this. I can do this, right? Yes. And they haven't been beat up enough by the marketplace. So um, what a for sale by owner call looks like is totally different than what a expired call looks like. Because I always tell my agents when we're talking that you want to um, – you want to be, it, it's a very concierge service type approach when you're making the initial phone call to for sale by owner. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, you may reach out and, and, and ask if you can come preview the home that, you know, you want to stay abreast to what's in the marketplace because you specialize in this marketplace and there's limited inventory right now. Right. And right. So if I have a buyer, I'd like to know that your home is available for sale. Right. So exactly. that might be the initial contact. And you really, when you go out there, you know, you may provide some literature about uh, your track record, but you're really not trying to sell them. If you try to sell them on your on that initial appointment and they're not giving off any buying signals, you're 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 pretty much dead in the water. But um, if if you continue to build that relationship and establish rapport with that for sale by owner, you are going to uh, you're going to be you're going to build top of mind awareness so that when Brett, when they've been beat up enough by, you know, uh, unqualified buyers, by people not showing up for showings, uh, by lowball offers, um, 
then that's when you're going to step in as the superhero. And, you know, some other value add components are providing the state required disclosures, right? The lead based pain and a property disclosure, which is required in our area. Um, maybe some mar occasional market reports, right? All you're doing is you're adding value at add, constantly adding value. And that's how you, that's how you build the relationships or gain mind share with the, for somebody owners. I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. When I, when I'm talking to the first sale owners, and most of the time, like I said, it is a different, you know, approach because where the expired, so they've already been on the market. Like I said, they've already been working with another realtor before. So they've already raised their hand to that. Uh, like you said, the you know the for sale balloner, you know, a lot of times their goal is they 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 really want to save money or uh, they think that they, they can definitely do it themselves and you know so you know definitely my mindset is understanding that uh, you know first of all I'm not going to go in there telling them that they can't do it uh, because that's all more reason for them to prove that or try to prove anyway that they can do it and it just gets everything off in the wrong you know mindset so for having that. Uh, the understanding going in, you know, learning what they're doing and what maybe I can do to help them along with, like you said, hey, uh, if I have a buyer that I'm already working with, and I'm not saying I do because I'm not going to lie to you and tell you I've got a buyer for your house when I haven't even seen your house yet. But, uh, you know, would you be willing to pay, you know, say a 3% commission or something of that nature uh, for a you know, buyer agency side? And so it's letting them know that I'm not here to try to solicit them for the listing. I'm here to try to build a relationship and see how we can help each other. Yep. Love it, man. So you're, you're, you're right on track. And um, so the system, let me see if I can share my screen here. Let's see. Hopefully it'll let me do this. Yep. There we go. So I'm going to go solo here and cut me and you out for a minute. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but what I wanted to show you um is the Vulcan 7 dashboard. Can you see this now? I can, yep. Okay, so this is the this is Vulcan 7. This is what you get when you log in. And you can see that if you go to contacts, that um, it will pull up. Usually when you go into contacts, it will pull up the new contacts for each day. Um, in other words, they'll be delivered and you'll see which contacts are the new ones. And then you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to piecemeal kind of what calls you should be making and what calls you shouldn't. Um, so you can see that the data was delivered today, August 18th uh, at 6.09 this morning. You can see the prospect's name. I, we even get email addresses in some cases, which is really cool. Um, and then you can, you know, obviously you can go down and what's great is you can segment all these two. Um, so this is um, anything you see that's in off, the off market category is expired. And then for sell by owner data is segmented also. Um, so it's a really cool platform, man, because like I said, you can just tee all this data up. I can click this and then click begin dial session. Right. And then it'll, I, I can, I can start cranking out dials. I mean, how long did that take? That's like what? 30 seconds. Yeah. I mean, less than 30 yeah. seconds. So it's you a big can power dialer. Yeah. 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 So you can see the impact that that's that a system like this can make. And, and so, like I said, for you, while your business right now is um it is is doing really well i mean you're a you're a six figure uh a year income earner um you've got decisions to make right so decisions uh in your business as it relates to how can i optimize my time right we talked about that yeah, absolutely and the way that you can do that is through systems like this one and so um you know i think you know, as you continue to grow your business out, you really want to look at different different tools to help you optimize your time. Uh, Vulcan 7, great tool um, to help optimize your time. Don't look at it as an expense. Look at it as an investment, right? And right. Investment not only in yourself, uh, but an also an investment in, in, in your business moving forward um, through optimization, right? Through, through freeing up your time. So, um, you know, that was, that's been a great tool for us. Um, the way our workflow is right now. So that data comes in. Uh, I work with uh, our marketing manager. His name is Dennis. Again, um, he will take that down that data and download it into a CSV. And then what, what, what we'll get, let me see if I can go back and share my screen again. Cause I want to, I, I just want to, I want to, I, I want to be completely transparent and show you our workflow. 
So if I show you, if I show you, uh, so you saw the data as it comes in, right? So you can then right. download that data into a CSV file, right? You can take this data and download it. So if you, you can click it and then you can go more, I think, and then you can go to export, right? Select all contacts and then, and then, and then ex, ex, export it into a CSV file. And then once you've done that, you can, you can upload it to, you know, either to your, your CRM that you're currently using, but what we do with it is that um, Dennis will, he'll email that data out every morning. So I'll show you what, what he sends out. It's like, so these are the leads he sent out this morning at 747, right? Five hours ago. And Dennis always puts a nice quote in there. And, um, and so this is the data, right? So here's the first sale by owner. Here's the expired data. You can see like comes up in a spreadsheet. And this is delivered right out to our agents every morning, right? So they have fresh data to call every single morning. Uh, they, can, they can upload this into our Commissions Inc. platform, which is what we're using right now, uh, that which is this, right? And so this, this, has a, um, this has a dialing component to it as well. And uh, let me see if I can get to the leads here. So you can still see my screen, right? Yep, sure can. Uh, let's see. Nah. Well, and as you're as you're looking for that, real quick, I will mention that uh, with me using KV Core, that is another cool thing that uh, KV Core similarly does offer is a really you know nice power dialer. I haven't tried to really import you know CSV files into it yet. Yeah. But I do love the ability of, with KV Core, like I say, especially when the company gives it to you for free, a $6,000 platform, yeah. is that uh, uh, rather than it calling from another unknown number, it actually dials with my caller ID on it, calls me first, and then calls the contact. And uh, it's just been a great way, you know, like you said, to go from one to the next and then follow up with my calls for the day. Yep. And it works, man. And again, it's like I don't want people to get so enamored in the what. It's more about the 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 the, the that the fact that you're taking action. Uh, that is the most important component. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, now you can kind of see what we're doing from an expired and a for sale by owner uh, um, perspective. And I mean, let's we'll we'll kind of we'll wrap up talking a little bit about recruiting because I know that's an important piece of 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 what you're looking to do, especially as you grow uh, your business. And, um, you know, you know, you, so you, at this point you're looking for people leverage and, and I know that, you know, you and I share um, the fact that we both uh, are now at eXp Realty and certainly we want to share um, our great stories with all those agents out there and share um, eXp story. And, and I, I won't, I won't go really deep on this cause we're running short on time. But what I do want to tell you is that, um, the best strategy that I can give you is, is the phone calls are going to work only for the relationships that you've already built. Okay. Yep. So I would, I would, uh, I would caution against calling people you don't know and trying to share EXP or even trying to recruit them to your team. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to give you a different workflow for that, but everybody that you've already built a relationship with everybody in your marketplace that already knows you, you have a duty to share yeah. it with them. Uh, it is, it, and that is mission critical for you. Okay. And, wow. and certainly, certainly you've been in the industry long enough to know uh, that, um, that what we're doing right now is something really special. And so you, that's why I say you have a, you have a civil duty to, to go out and share this with um, the realtor community by and large, especially those that you've built relationships with. Um, here's where it gets a little bit tricky, my friend. Okay. Because, much like what's happened in the um, in the in the realtor consumer world, and what I mean by that is um, the the data now that we used to we used to hold um, is all available to the consumer now, right? And so that's changed the way that we work as realtors, right? Because now um, it used to be that, you know, in real estate, we had like a, some, a consumer would tell you what they wanted and then you went out and found it. Right. Right. And that's just not the case anymore. And it's the same thing with realtors. 
Realtors can get information on any company they want by just surfing the web or making a phone call, right? They can, they can get all that information. And so right now, what I'm seeing become more, more evident is that you need to be cre the creator of the content, right? And you need to be the one that's influencing because in influence and credibility are one in the same, right? And so you're a, you're, you're a six figure a year earner. And there are probably millions of agents out there who are looking to be a six figure a year earner, right? I agree. Yeah. And so, Brett, what do you have to give? You have to give to the realtor community right now all the tools, systems, and resources that have enabled you to become a six figure a year earner. So, I would say, Mr. Brett, that you've got something very valuable that you need to share with the realtor community. And then if you share that, Brett, what you will do is you will attract people, right? Um, you won't need to make phone calls to people that you don't know, because if you're persistent, we just it's, isn't it funny how the correlation between um, working with buyers and sellers is very same to the, the, the correlation between working with realtors? If, yeah. you're, if you're persistent with the content that you put out and you're putting out value, mm -hmm. you're, going, you're going to naturally attract people into your world. The new, the new currency is content. The new digital currency is content. So you've got, and it doesn't have to be video. You know, you can share, you know, you can share your experiences. You can just share your experiences through a blog, right? You, there's so many different channels now, especially with social media being in place for you to become relevant and you to be, you to deliver value to your consumer who, if you're looking at recruiting are other real estate agents, right? Right, right. Yep. Yeah. And so I would say, um, you know, make sure I make a list of everybody that you know in the realtor community and then make a list of what your value add components are into the realtor community by and large that you don't know and start local, start delivering value locally. Right. And you may even want to start delivering value one on one. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so you may you may do a workshop. Um, in your local market and have a title company sponsor it and say, um, this is how I got to six figures, right? Or, you know, so, uh, tools and resources I use to, to run a six figure real estate business, right? Yep. And, and what's going to happen is your people are going to be naturally attracted to that and they're going to start asking questions. And that's going to open up the platform for you, Brett, to then share our wonderful EXP model with them, right? Yeah, it's, it, like you said, it's a game changer. And for me, you know, making that transition myself, you know, like I said, never thought I was going to leave Remax and I was a little skeptical about that. Um, you know, but I have to give credit even to my you know, previous broker who I loved and uh, appreciated and thought was probably one of the best in the industry. And the thing that I had to be reminded of is it wasn't the brand that built me up. It's the agent that builds the brand. And if the agents, you know, somebody that they can like, love, trust, you know, respect, you know, the agent's going to succeed no matter where they go. And that was, you know, kind of a, you know, that was a valuable information to remind me that I don't have to hide behind any particular one, one brand. I can excel wherever I go. And this just gave me, you know, the opportunity to really take it to another level. Absolutely, my friend. Well, I, I hate to cut you short, man. We're about three minutes over here. How can people connect with you, Brett, if they have questions about how you built a six-figure business or if they have questions about EXP or what your transition was like? Yeah, well, first, first of all, they can uh, message me on, or friend me on request if they haven't already on Facebook. Um, you know, reach me out by messenger if they want to do it more private. Otherwise, uh, they can contact me by phone, um, you know, text or cell, and that's 920-419-3909. Yeah, so I'll return the phone calls. My voicemail is never full. Awesome, man. Hey, hey uh, Brett, thank you so much for, for taking uh, a few minutes out of your afternoon to spend time with us here, man. I, I feel like you did certainly add value to the realtor community. And listen, for those of you listening or watching, um, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can schedule a free live coaching session at liverealestatecoaching.com. Um, there is no topic that's out of bounds, and I am willing to share with you anything that we've done to build a business that sells over 300 homes annually. Um, and we'll wrap with that, brother. Thank you very much, Mike. Really appreciate it. It's been an honor. All right, my man. Be good. You too. All right, brother. We're we're out. All right. Awesome. Nothing.